Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is BSL Hasu League round of 32 group D from BSL 17 bottom right hand corner. We have Biagster starting as the blue pro toss up right hand corner. We have flying as the red Zerg. Looks like first scout going to be working in flying's advantage. This is on Circuit Breaker, the old school map. If you're not familiar with it, we've got the, it, it's been updated. Circuit Breaker 1.2, you've got the Lurker Eggs, which everybody loves, uh, added the natural expansion. Third base mineral only. Uh, ramps, kind of providing some degree of map control towards that third, 12 o'clock base with inverted ramps on both directions. So, and that is where the third base, that third gas is located. So, um, you have that at the 12 and six o'clock location, then the three and nine o'clock location. This it also creates a, a little bit of an inefficient mining thing going on when you have to dedicate. It's a little bit easier for Zerg than I think for Protoss and Terran with this split mining action. But otherwise, you have, it's basically another main with another mineral only across the map from there. Um, just so you know what this looks like if you were unfamiliar with it. It's been a minute since it's been uh, in the map pool. Gateway dropping at the main. So by uh, rather than dropping a pylon, so not dropping a pylon at the natural, opening, and this leads me to believe he might go for more two gate play, but we're seeing a spawning pool opener opposite side from flying as well. And this is on a four-player map. So we'll see if Flying will be able to turn this one around. Yeah, it's going to be two gate. So battle of the early game micro. Keep in mind when Flying attempted to go for the Zergling Flood in the opening stages matches, he was in fact uh, deposed by Byaxter in those matches. So let's see if he's able to even it up right here. He's pocketing that drone just in case a probe is able to sneak in. Disguise the timing for a second. I like it. But the Zerg and let's see if he produces the Zerglings as well. So we've got a pair of Zerglings being produced and a 12... Ooh, looking for a two-hatch Mutalisk to follow this up. It's not untransitionable, but that is going to cut down into the amount of Zerglings that are being produced early to deal with these zealots and the overlord so this is a great scout though from flying so overlord going to be able to scout that zealot going to be able to walk in see the double gateway and that should trigger yeah lack of the still might want to get 100 gas for the zergling speed but skip it from there but it should trigger a sizable zergling production after that looks like the drone going to be able to make its way up or drone probe going to be able to make its way up top right one advantage to Zealots on Circuit Breaker is there are these ramps to work with as far as fallback points, as long as you maintain three Zealots. Zer the Zerglings actually ooh, looking for a run by. Initially playing for a run by, now holding short. Three more Zealots making the way across. Flying is, yeah, building a. And this is the hard part for Zerg, is building the right amount of Zerglings to defend this. May, might be a little bit more challenging. And unfortunately for flying, he's taking some free shots on his Zerglings as well as he's marching them across. So now he's going to have 10 Zerglings, which is sufficient, but because he's ending up attacking piecemeal, the Zelts are going to be able to recharge that shield and get some pretty good value trades. Two more Zelts holding the ramp. Cybernetic score morphing behind this. We are seeing a tech to layer behind the Zergling speed. And so it's going to be one base versus two base play. I haven't seen one base Protoss in a while either. By uh, throwing out some uh, Bonnet style stuff for us here. So layer will finish. And we'll see if flying is going to have sufficient anti-air with the one base. That's one difficulty f against one base Protoss is they are able to get tech out fairly rapidly. And engagement on that ramp again, making it a little bit more challenging for Zerglings to get this round. And again, by uh, able to move up and we uh, soften up and get some good kills as well. The Zealots continuing to press out. Spire just starting. Stargate has just finished. And that might result in an Overlord kill or two as well with a potential supply block and 
Flying has not dedicated an additional Overlord at this stage to go in and get the information. And he's got five Zealots moving in and not enough Zerglings to defend. The Zerglings are on the complete other side of the map. So evacuating that natural expansion. Drones holding the ramp briefly, now trying to drill through. Several of them going to get taken out and Flying's economy wasn't that strong to start. And the Zealot doing a good job of blockading, getting some extra damage behind all this. Finally, the Zerglings able to join up but again some fantastic trades overall for Biagster and flying potentially all in right this second so Spire he's got 10 drones Zelt's still able to march in yeah the Zelt's just going to hold the ramp right this second he's going a, a scout oh so scouts actually uh did he cancel the scout Canceled the scout last second, potentially, right there. To be manor. Um, getting the Corsair out instead. Looks like the ramp is going to hold for Baya. More Zerglings marching the way across. Flying not out of it yet. And that cancel... Actually buying some really good time to get some anti-air up, so... Some Mutalists should be in play. Zelt's still cleaning things up, and this is turning into another wild one. So now some defensive cannons at the main to deal with the potential incoming Mutalisk attack. That is going in Baya, where he got some good damage done earlier. Because he didn't follow it up with Corsairs taking down Overlords. He's only got the... He still doesn't have his natural expansion. He's got five Zelts, which would beat these... The Zerling production, but he's mostly in the dark. The Corsairs haven't been fielded, so he doesn't know what he's up against right this second. So he doesn't know whether there's an all-in counter. And with a small enough Corsair count of two in the cannons, that's still not defending the gateways out here, nor defending that natural expansion. So the Scourge might be able to yeah, ransack that Corsair. Flying needs to be a little bit careful. So just going to hold short. Deal some damage. He's going to try to run the Zerglings in as well. Corsairs can engage this. They're just worried about that Scourge. In the backfield, yeah, the Scourge is going to be able to push the back. And kind of a secondary problem with this is you don't have the... Without the two-base economy, you don't have enough Corsair and also the delay there. He didn't have quite the economy to get the five Corsair out that he needed, producing a Dragoon army in between. So hints of the previous match. But Flying's still not in a bad position. He's getting that third up. He's near even on workers. He's held. Looks like he's getting some Hydrals out in, as well. The, I'm not sure what these drones are doing behind the lines. He's still going to be able to deny this third for quite some time. This is a sizable Zealot army. Looks like... Oh, I don't like the sacrifice of these Mutalisks in the main. But it looks like it is going to be like counter gateway flood. But this is a counter gateway flood to try to secure a second base versus the three base output. So flying, if he can get that third base saturated and get a sufficient amount of units out, he should win this hands down because he'll just have an overwhelming amount of units to make the way out, not chat letting me know. I've been bad about this. I didn't update the score to show that Baia won game one. So keep in mind, this is an elimination situation for flying. So this is do or die for him as well. Sufficient units out for Baya to go ahead and push out. I don't think Flying has enough to defend that 3 o'clock base. And I don't think Baya is even going to bother with that natural expansion. He just wants to go for the kill here against so that hatchery. First of all, not saturated. It looks like it's a Sim City overall. Baya grouping up. I'm not sure how he knows about this third, but it looks like he recognizes that it's up and he's going to see it via the creep regardless. You should be able to wipe that out. It's still going to be two base versus one. But Baya with a massive supply lead once again. He's got the weapons upgrade advantage as well. And flying once again caught without sufficient defense. Nearly double the supply off one base. Good macro from Baya. Yeah. Now moving in to wipe that hatchery out. Flying moving up to engage it. I don't even know that he should engage it. I think he should just sit back... Wait for a better exchange off the two base. 
Although some zealots getting taken out. But yeah, that base still forfeit. Looks like a probe waiting to go ahead and grab that natural expansion. In the meantime, full control group of Hydralisks starting to make their way out. They do, they're do. they still waiting on the range upgrade on top of everything else. So these aren't... They don't have all their upgrades, which with that Dragoon range, they're really going to be able to punish this. Two creep colonies... Or sorry, two sunken colonies to try to provide some additional offense. And with the Dragoons occupying the Hydralisks, those overlords also somewhat exposed. The Corsairs need to stay within the protective range of those Dragoons. One of them wiped out. And flying holding for right now, but... Back down to two bases. Once Baya gets, if he gets that second base up and saturates that, it'll be a flip scenario where Baya will have the superior economy and will be able to roll it against his opponent. Hydralisk range has finished. Plus one weapons, plus one armor, not that far from finishing. Flying dropping a additional hatchery or two and an evolution chamber, so it looks like he wants to try to get it done off the two base play, the Zergling spotting that natural expansion construction at the natural. Feels redundant saying that. Zergling trying to chase down that probe, but it's not going to happen. We have another Zergling sneaking out. The Corsair making sure that a third base hasn't been re-established out here and natural expansion extractor coming online for flying. Still way down on supply. And the more this game moves on, the more should move into Baez, Baez's favor. It looks like a single zealot marching across to try to scout. I think he mostly is there to try to determine whether a third base has been produced. No third base there. Zergling trying to engage the cannon is just noting that that natural expansion is in fact up. That might prompt flying to go ahead and grab a third. But I still don't think he has critical mass to defend it. Half the supply of Baya right this second, although 10 of that is in workers. <clears throat> Four gateways pumping, Templar Archives, Psystorm on the way. Probably could tack on another two gateways. Comfortably here. Corsair sees the additional hatcheries out in the main. Corsair taking pretty heavy damage as it's making its way back across. And it looks like Flying's done a... He's had a really difficult time keeping his army cohesive to engage Baya out in the field. And as a result, he's ended up bleeding a good amount of units in damage, giving Baya advantages <clears throat> in these open fields. A large Hydralis force has been produced. Supply cap right this second. I think Flying's going for a massive Hydralis counter. Third base being grabbed from Baya. That might be a misstep. Because that's 400 resources. That's not going to units right this second. That might give an opportunity for Flying to sneak back into this. And plus one weapon's just about finished. And that should be sufficient to at least start engaging wholesale. The, qu the question will be, can Flying get better open engagement and concavity. And Baya doing a great job with this Corsair, also trailing this dogging, this Hydralisk force, keeping an eye on it as it's moving out. Overlord speed finish, plus one weapons for the Hydralisk not there. The Dragoons marching and fanning out. Corsair again going to check the main to make sure there wasn't any push to Hive tech. Also see the saturation. And so now he knows that it's do or die here for flying. He just has to engage this attack force. And again, yeah, flying not getting the full cohesion. So taking free damage, losing for units that he can't afford to lose in these open field engagements. Salt's marching back out, now flying, starting to engage this army, but Baya already, already backing out. And we have some high Templar dashing to the front. Plenty of size storm right there. If Flying can magically dodge some Psystorm, he might be able to stay in this, but otherwise this looks like another Biagstra win. Now pushing to engage. Psystorm's hitting good amount of those Hydralisks. 
Obelor getting taken out as well, and flying supply plummeting. He is now one third the supply of Biagster. And it looks like Biagster is going to be able to comfortably walk away with this. Nice finals victory to advance out of Group D. A couple units getting picked off here and there otherwise. High Templar are getting picked off, but Flying's still trying to make something of it. Baya doesn't need to attack into this, but he's already got that third up and running. He's got the cannons. Yeah, Flying recognizing it. Kind of GG right there. Three bases up. Flying has no army. Well played regardless. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We're going to move on to Group E. Thanks for listening.